Hi, everyone. My name is Kyle Johnson, and I'm a data science manager at AWS Professional Services and an adjunct professor at Carnegie Mellon University. Uh, first of all, I want to say thank you for coming and joining us at reInvent and allowing us to share our story today with you. Uh, the purpose of this talk is for us to, to share our story about a project that AWS Professional Services and, and Q2 worked on together. Uh, to speed up the, the, uh, the, the clinical trials process, the R&D process, and, and make it more accurate too. So not just uh, to speed up operations of the trials, but, uh, but to make their, their operations more effective and accurate. Um, and I'll be back up here in a minute to talk about the AWS services that we used in this project. Uh, but to, to begin the talk and to give background about the project itself and the business problem itself, I'll introduce Javi first. Thanks, Kyle. So first, we're going to do a quick overview of what we're going to talk about today. Some of you guys may have joined us in the leadership session this morning, so you got a little bit teaser of what we're going to talk about. Um, in a few minutes, I'm going to invite my colleague Steve up, and he's going to talk to you guys about how, at Keyscore Solutions, how we managed to innovate and how we combine uh, technology expertise and business acumen to come up with these uh, truly truly useful and amazing use cases like the one we're going to talk to you about. After we talk about how we innovate at Q-Square Solutions, I'm going to come back on and I'm going to give you a quick primer about clinical trials, a clinical trials 101 portion of the talk. This part is important because you really have to understand how complex clinical trials are and what they entail to really understand the value proposition that we're presenting here today and hopefully also help you guys understand how you might be able to incorporate um, some of this thinking and some of these use cases into your own organization. We're then going to do a deep dive into the actual solution, how we built it. Um, don't worry about that. That's, we'll, we'll have it structured so that everybody of all kind of technical levels can, can understand and gain some insight from it, from a high level solutioning perspective and the, the tools and thinking that we used. To, to the more technical details that Kyle is going to walk us through. And then at the end, we're going to close out just by talking about what's next, right? We're very excited about this use case, but what more can we do in leveraging machine learning and artificial intelligence to enhance clinical trials? First, a quick word about our company, Q-Score Solutions. Q-Score Solutions is a company that works in clinical trials. Specifically, we are what's called a central lab. A central lab is a company that receives samples, might be a blood sample, it could be a urine sample, a tumor sample, any sample that is collected uh, during the clinical trial process, they get sent to us, to Keyscore Solutions, and we test them. We have labs all over the world, experts of every variety. We test every sample. We, we produce results for those samples, and then we share those results with doctors so they can provide care for their patients, and to pharmaceutical companies so that they can then use that data that we generated to seek approval from the FDA and similar agencies. So the scope of what we do is very much, it's very niche and very much tailored to testing samples in a clinical trial. Now I'm going to invite up my colleague Steve and he's gonna talk about innovation as a collaborative process at Q-Squared. Thank you, Javi. So my name is Steven Lukowski. I lead cloud operations for Q-Squared Solutions. So at Q-Squared Solutions, we embrace technology. And we realize that the cloud is the perfect playground for discovering new technologies, learning how they work, and applying those. This is the perfect week to learn what those technologies are. We're going to learn about technologies and cloud services at reInvent that can help us solve problems within our own companies or discover new opportunities for us as well as our customers. By establishing periodic touch points between those of us who work in the cloud or know what's going on in the cloud and those who operate at the business level and know about the problems that are, trying to, that are occurring or the opportunities that the business would like to go after, innovative solutions can be found. Oh, I apologize for not advancing that screen. But there you go. So this collaboration works together to discover innovation. So at Q-Squared Solutions, Javi represents the business. My focus 
is on the cloud. And through our collaborative approach, we've identified several areas within AWS that we can leverage for our own company, and those include machine learning, customer engagement, IoT, robotics, blockchain, and AR and VR. The very nature of clinical trials affords so many opportunities to leverage advanced technologies, such as those that are available and being developed within AWS. Machine learning offers the ability to analyze and interpret data with, that's much faster and with greater insights than ever has been possible. Chatbots and call center automation bring forth greater and more precise support and service to our internal and our external clients. IoT brings testing and data collection to the patient wherever they are and allows for much improved tracking of samples as well as supplies and equipment. Robotics has been around for a while, but when you mirror that with cloud services, new opportunities arise to incorporate an automation with data and analytics. And blockchain opens up possibilities for improved sample management and data collection across clinical sites. And finally, AR and VR provide interesting capabilities to enhance pathology, laboratory task, and sample management. So by establishing collaborative partnerships, like with Javi, within your own company, and getting folks talking, and then when you partner that with AWS, you can stay abreast of new technologies and services and identify how you can apply those to problems as well as opportunities. So I'm going to invite Javi back up to the stage, and he's going to talk about how we've applied machine learning to an application involved with clinical trials that's really made a difference at Q-squared Solutions. Thank you. Thanks, Steve. All right, so now for the, for the more lecture-y portion. Um, you guys came to talk, to learn about the technology aspect. Little did you know, you're also going to learn a little bit about clinical trials, so hopefully some of you will find that interesting. Um, putting drugs on the market is a very difficult proposition. From discovering the drug to having it approved on the market and selling it to patients, it is a very long and difficult process. According to a recent study, it takes, on average, 10 plus years to go from discovering a drug to putting it on the market, 10 plus years. During that time span, pharmaceutical companies can often spend around $2.6 billion just to put a drug in the market. Again, from discovering a compound to doing some preclinical testing, doing clinical trials, the regulatory process, et cetera, $2.6 billion. And the success rate, excuse me, is also it's also pretty, pretty low, it's around 12%. So 12%, that means that around 88% of the candidate drugs and candidate compounds never actually make it to market, right? So a pharmaceutical company could go through the process and spend eight years and $2 billion trying to develop a drug only to realize almost at the end that they cannot use the drug because it's not effective or it's not safe. So there's a ton of complexity and a ton of money invested in putting drugs on the market. Clearly, drug development is therefore uh, an area ripe for disruption and for optimization. And that's what we're trying to do at Keyscore Solutions. So clearly there's a very good opportunity to use AI and other very advanced technologies to optimize the process. So we can look at what our colleagues in the industry are doing uh, precisely to do that. So we're looking at where AI dollars are being spent in the drug development process. Well, some companies uh, from some of our, our colleagues, some of whom you'll hear talks from at AWS at reInvent, uh, they're using it to identify targets. So what areas of the body might be, or what cells, what types of cells might be good targets for drugs to treat certain diseases. Others might be using it to discover the compounds. So once you have a target, uh, you know, what part of the body you wanna target with your drug, what, what drug do you need to develop to target that specific condition so you can treat it? 
Drug repurposing is another interesting one where uh, some companies are using artificial intelligence to see which of their existing drugs or which existing drugs already on the market can be used to treat other diseases. This is why sometimes you'll see something like an arthritis medication being also used for psoriasis, for example. So we have AI to try to find those links as to which drugs can be used in multiple areas because this really speeds up the clinical trial process and it helps put drugs um, in the hands of patients much sooner. We also have preclinical studies. So before you start putting the drug into humans, you need to find out, or at least guesstimate, uh, or do better than guesstimating probably, at whether drug is going to be safe to use. Um, what are the characteristics of the drug? How does it behave? How does it metabolize? So again, AI models can be used there. And then there's safety profiling as well. So trying to figure out right before clinical trials what might be the appropriate dose to use um, for the patient population that you're targeting and what might be some of the side effects that you're anticipating for that particular drug. So these are the five biggest areas by far of investment currently in drug development in AI. At the bottom, what we see here is the timeline of drug development. So we have a discovery stage and we have clinical trials. Clinical trials is where humans get involved as, as patients. And discovery stage is everything that happens in between from discovery to R&D to even some animal modeling. So clinical trials comprise at least two-thirds, often more, around 75% of the time that it takes to develop a drug. Because clinical trials, like we looked earlier, they are very lengthy. Some clinical trials can take many, many years just to see if a drug works. So we can see now where are these investment dollars going. And we can see that the majority of these investment dollars are, in fact, going to the discovery stage. And that's great. You know, I don't want to say anything negative about it because that's awesome and it helps us put, discover great drugs that we would not have otherwise discovered. But it also means that we are not spending nearly enough money or innovating enough in the most lengthy part of the drug development process, which is clinical trials. And that's where companies like Q-Score Solutions come in. We live exclusively in that space, in that area of the timeline, in the clinical trial space. So if we can optimize the clinical trial process and bring it down, make it faster, make it more efficient, that's where we where we stand to make the best gains uh, and help actually put drugs in the market faster. So what is a clinical trial? A clinical trial is a scientific experiment. It aims to see, to see whether this drug that you're testing is safe to use in patients and efficacious, which is to say, does it work? Does it actually treat the disease that it's intended to treat? So it's just a giant scientific experiment. But as far as scientific experiments go, it is one of the most complicated ones you can try to run. There are a million moving parts. This slide is an overly simplified look at some of the components in a clinical trial. We have thousands of patients across hundreds of clinics, across dozens of countries in four or five continents around the world. You're coordinating that with amazing and incredibly big project management teams to try to keep it all together. You have safety monitoring to make sure that patients from around the world are safe and they're not um, getting too many side effects from a drug, or at least that they're being treating, treated correctly for those. You also have, of course, the assessments. So when you're looking at evaluating whether a drug works and whether it's safe, you're going to have to run some tests, perhaps some blood work, some x-rays, an MRI, a blood pressure test. Those are all of our assessments there. The point is there are a ton of moving pieces in a clinical trial. And just like with any scientific experiment, you need to make sure that everybody who's participating in your clinical trial or in your scientific experiment is conducting the experiment with the exact same rigor, so that uh, a test conducted in a small clinic in Korea is comparable in quality and rigor to uh, the same test being performed at the Mayo Clinic or the same test being performed in South Africa. The way you coordinate all of this, the way that you make sure that everybody's on the same page is by putting together a document. We call that the protocol. The clinical trial protocol is a giant document that outlines what everybody for a clinical trial should do and how they should do it. So a pharmaceutical company will write a protocol and then distribute it to all participants, to all vendors, to anybody who's helping conduct a clinical trial and say, hey, look, everybody needs to read this protocol and everybody needs to conduct the clinical trial exactly in accordance with this. The challenge with this is now we have a giant document and we have parties like Q-Score Solutions who are interested in only a small portion of that document. Q-Score Solutions, like I said, we're a central lab. 
So if the document talks about how the drug is going to be manufactured or about what legal and regulatory affairs have to do with this particular clinical trial, that's all great and good, but that's not what Q-score solutions does. So we're not interested in reading that part of the protocol. We're only interested in knowing, okay, for this clinical trial, the pharmaceutical company wants to perform which safety labs and which efficacy labs. So we have a team of scientists who will receive a protocol from a customer, and they read the whole thing. Okay, and it's typically between 80 and 150 pages long. Unfortunately, there is no one section in a protocol where I can go and say, Q-score solutions, read here. It's on page 50, and then you go to page 50, and you read it, and then there's everything, and you can ignore everything else. That does not exist. Instead, the information that our company is looking for is just spread out throughout the entire protocol. There might be a reference to a pregnancy test that needs to be done, and it's on a footnote on page 17. There might be a list of blood work that needs to be done, and that's on page 50. And there might be a diagram outlining what DNA testing needs to be done later on page 70. And there's no way of knowing really where you're gonna find the information that you, you need necessarily. So we have scientists, trained scientists, high-skilled scientists, who have to read the entire protocol to make sure that they don't miss anything. And it's a very, very time-consuming process. So this is kind of our predicament. You can imagine that such a process is extremely time consuming. It takes several hours uh, for any of our experts to read even the simplest of protocols. And because it's a manual process that we know just because humans are doing it, that it is by definition error prone, we have to build in a lot of QC steps, a lot of quality control into the process, often taking days or weeks to make sure that we didn't get anything wrong. Because that's the other part of the equation. The stakes could not be higher for us. If we make a mistake and we extract from one of these protocols the wrong lab, or we fail to identify a particular test that needs to be done on patients, we could be seriously jeopardizing the safety of a patient and the treatment that they are receiving. So the impact of the errors here is extremely high. We need to make sure that we get it right. So with this value proposition, we did what Steve described that we do, which is we get together business, the technology folks, and we get together and we think, how can we solve this problem? And, and help make clinical trials faster and more efficient. So that's what we're gonna do an overview now, which is the solution that we build using AWS, AWS services. The whole solution is built entirely on the AWS cloud, and we are stringing together a series of AWS services in a way that helps us achieve our goal, which is, remember, to extract from a protocol only the lab tests, only the tests that Q-Score Solutions is going to perform for any clinical trial. So the first thing we do is we've, we've, we've built this user interface, right? And our scientists, when they receive a protocol, instead of opening a blank Word document, now they can go in and they can go to this user interface and they can upload a PDF. This upload PDF gets deposited in, a, uh, in an Amazon S3 bucket. And then we have a lot of services that are listening um, or watching the S3 bucket. And when there's a new document uploaded, we use AWS Lambda to transport uh, information about that upload to Amazon Textract, and we basically pass that document onto Amazon Textract. Textract, if you guys have not used it, I highly recommend it. Kyle is going to give us a technical description and a bit of how it works, um, so I'll leave that up to him in, in a few minutes. But it, it truly is amazing. Textract is, to say that Textract's OCR is frankly quite reductive, I find, because it does such an amazing job at extracting from any document um, the information that you need. So we use TextRack to convert the PDF of the document into a text file that we can use for all of the other services that, we're, that I'm gonna talk about. TextRack is also, interestingly, very capable in extracting tables from a document, which is something that is also very prevalent in the types of documents that we are looking at. So TextRack will extract those tables in a nice table, a CVS format, and intelligently understands what, is, uh, what are the contents of that table. So it's, it's very, very useful for that. Once we have converted the PDF into text, that's where, where the real magic begins for us at Q Squared, which is to say we start by using Comprehend Medical. Comprehend Medical is able to read through an entire document and identify from that document all of the medical and clinical terms, and it labels them, and it does an incredibly good job at it. So for example, if your document contains the word psoriasis, uh, Comprehend Medical is going to extract that and label that as a as a disease. If the word aspirin is in there, it's going to extract that and label it as a drug. 
Now for key score solutions, we're interested in the stuff that Comprehend Medical finds and labels as a test or an assessment. Comprehend Medical does a very, very good job at extracting from your document all of the tests. In our baselining and the testing, we found that Comprehend Medical was able to find basically everything that we were looking for at Key Score Solutions. Any test that Key Score Solutions would need to run, Comprehend Medical contextually understands where those terms or entities are in the document and it extracts them. And it gives us very useful information about where in the document it found those terms and with what confidence it feels it, finds those, it found those terms. It doesn't end here for us though, because Q-Score Solutions, like I said, we have a very narrow area of focus in that we only do the lab tests. So if you think about it, if your doctor says that you should go get an x-ray done and some blood work done, both an x-ray and blood work, are, both of those things are tests, okay? So Comprehend Medical from a document is going to find x-ray and it's gonna label it as a test and it's going to find glucose testing and it's gonna label that as a test as well. But Q-Score Solutions specifically in our business, we are only interested in glucose because that is the stuff that we do. We test samples, we don't do x-rays. So we needed to do a little bit more work downstream to make sure that we're refining the output and getting it done to exactly what it is that we need. So we built a custom natural language processing model uh, built on SageMaker. And in this model, we, we trained it to receive as input the output from Comprehend Medical and so basically Comprehend Medical is identifying candidates and targets, feeding those candidates for lab tests into our custom NLP. And then our NLP is running on that data and then effectively refining the output and giving us the final list of tests that we need. Because our custom NLP is taking as input an already pretty good list of tests and not the entire document, it means that training our NLP did not take years and millions of dollars. It took a month and about a dozen documents, 15 or so documents, to train a model to get an incredible amount of precision. This is really unheard of. Uh, before we really started working on the project, we thought we were gonna have to build a custom model from scratch, which we had no idea how we were even gonna be able to do that. But with Comprehend Medical being the muscle of, of our pipeline, of our project, we are able to, with very little work downstream, uh, do a, a really good job at, at really refining our list and getting the output that we needed. Once we have that, then of course we store all that information in various uh, other AWS services like uh, S3 for some outputs and DynamoDB for metadata, and then we feed that back to the user. Um, before I invite Kyle up, and he's going to talk in a, in a minute about um, the technical details of, of the tools we're using, I want you to take, take away from, from this our our approach, uh, we had a very open-minded approach about which services to use. And the fact that we were able to string together many different AWS services to get, to get the solution that we needed. You don't have to go out there and find a single solution that just works for you. You don't even have to look in multiple different providers. We were able to find everything we needed within the AWS cloud, but we were open about understanding what are the strengths and limitations of, diff of different systems and string them together to get exactly the output that we needed. Because we built our solution in this exact way that we're showing here, we're able to get the document from start to finish in under three months instead of years and get an incredible amount of accuracy um, and, and efficiency. So I really do encourage you guys, even, even if you're not working in the clinical trial space or the pharma space, you have a completely different use case. Heck, even if it's not NLP, I really encourage you guys to, to take, take a look at our, the approach that we did and, and try to kind of mimic that for your solution. Uh, so now I'm going to invite Kyle up, and Kyle's going to talk to us about um, how Textract and Amazon Comprehend Medical work, and then I'll come back on and, and wrap it up after that. Okay, so Comprehend, well, the Comprehend uh, NLP suite of services is, is that you can upload your own text documents to Comprehend it, and it will pull out for you uh, named entities from that document. Regular Comprehend, it will pull out business names or people names or locations, uh, things like that. The medical version of Comprehend, though, pulls out entities, named entities from blocks of, of medical text, and then uh, we'll, we'll classify those pieces of the text into the categories that you care about. So, 
in the medical space, what, what most of our customers tend to care about are things like medication names, conditions, test treatments and procedures, which is what uh, Q2 Solutions is talking about, anatomy, and then any PHI in that document that, uh, that you might want to, to scrub or, or, or do any other uh, use case with downstream. Within the entities that Comprehend Medical extracts for you from these NLP documents, it will also keep a sense of relationship between those entities. So if you have a medication that you're pulling out, uh, and then there's a dosage for that medication listed later on in the sentence, it will, it will keep that sense of this dose is tied to this medication, so that if you're looking for a specific medication, but only over a certain dosage level or, or amount of times per week you would want to take that medication, you can filter on the relationships that it extracts. And then it does the same thing with tests, treatments, and procedures too. So you can say, uh, this person has uh, has a history of this procedure or, or has had this procedure in the past, you'd want to associate that procedure name with this person or, or with this uh, other, other entity extracted. And then it also does negation too, which is equally important. Uh, many of our customers would want to filter on uh, CHF, for instance, in a, in a clinical note and say, give me all the patients that have a history of, of CHF. But the problem with that is that many times in clinical notes, if a doctor just mentions um, well, you wouldn't want to just search for the term CHF in clinical notes because all the times that the doctor wrote that this person has no history of CHF, it would retrieve for you all of those negations as well. So Comprehend Medical keeps for you a, a sense of relationship between the two. So if the doctor says in the note that this patient has no history of CHF, uh, that you can filter on that and then only retrieve the people who, who don't just have CHF mentioned in a regex but also actually uh, have, have, have had the disease. And, and it distills all this for you in a simple API call. So you don't need to know machine learning techniques. You don't need to know how to do uh, custom NER algorithms. You, you just send the text document to the API endpoint, and we give back for you in a semi-structured JSON document all of these entities. And the way that it looks is like this. So uh, aspirin, 200 milligrams, is, is required daily. Patient denies taking aspirin. And this highlights for you all of the, the pieces of functionality for you that I just highlighted. So, so in the upper left is the actual API call where you say to AWS Comprehend Medical, detect the entities, so detect the named entities from uh, this sentence coming up, send it to the US East region uh, with this URL and then, and then the text that I'm giving to you in this uh, in, this, in this API call here. But you can also point it to an S3 bucket instead if you'd prefer uh, to not actually include the text in that call itself. And then it'll identify for you the medications, the name, the dosage, the frequency of that medication, and, and again, that these are all related to each other, and that the patient denies taking medication. So uh, they are supposed to be taking it daily, but they are not currently doing so. And then in the same way, uh, in the upper left, it says, here is the API call. But rather than saying uh, detect entities, we're saying detect PHI. So it's a separate PHI call, or a separate API call to the same endpoint, uh, but with a different function that we're, we're expecting now from that API. And if the example sentence is, Kyle is taking two aspirins daily and works for Amazon in Seattle. Uh, I live in Pittsburgh, but the sentence is, um, uh, the point remains the same. So uh, the PHI, uh, as a name, so detect that, detect uh, the profession and where I work, and then uh, the address. And, and why this is really useful is that you can now use this API call to extract from the, from the text any sensitive information about that patient so that you can use, use that data for research or for machine learning algorithms or just for sharing downstream in a way that's safer for the patients whose data is contained in that block of text. Um, so it, so not only is it safer, but it now opens up way, uh, a, a, a huge amount of downstream use cases that were never possible before because you had been so concerned about protecting uh, patient information, and rightfully so. So, so Q Squared Solutions is talking today about using Comprehend Medical to extract uh, test names and, and, then, and then downstream searching for those test names. But you can imagine for a, a pre-trained named entity recognition medical model, uh, there are many other use cases that our customers are working on with this tool. And here are a couple of those use cases. So uh, Pop Health Analytics, 
those are the use cases, like I mentioned before, with CHF. So tell me all of the patients who have CHF or who don't have CHF in this, uh, in this large uh, body of clinical notes in our EHR. Optimizing revenue cycle management. So you can imagine if, if the, the people doing your actual coding in your hospital setting, in your provider setting, are not being uh, perfect, and nobody is, but are not, are not perfectly recording all of the procedures that they do, or not uh, perfectly recording the true complexity of the, of the procedures or the diagnoses of the patients that they have, you might want a way to double check uh, that you're capturing all of the codes that you should be from, this, uh, from the CHR uh, system. And so revenue cycle management is a very popular use case for Comprehend Medical. Therapeutic effectiveness is tied back to the CHF one as well. If you're not perfectly recording diagnoses that are, that are recorded for your patients, then you might be missing the true efficacy of your, of your treatment in an RWE type study. Uh, enhancing patient analytics is similar to the ones I've mentioned. PHI compliance is, is the one I mentioned before where you can uh, pull out all the PHI from a block of text. Auditing is quite similar to the revenue cycle management one that I mentioned. Are we properly recording all of the diagnoses and procedures that are mentioned in our note uh, in the structured format? Clinical trial recruitment is, is a big one because so often the trials are looking for very specific traits or very specific characteristics of the patients in, uh, in, a, in a payer setting or, or at a site, at a provider site. And, and if, again, if these diagnoses or, or certain test scores are not perfectly recorded, you'll miss those patients. And so by unlocking all of these semi-structured uh, notes or, or, or facts about patients in the notes, you can much more effectively search for patients who might be a good fit for your trial, uh, but you just never knew that they were there. Uh, and then on a more meta way of doing that, you can also then search for what are the best sites to host a trial that maybe you didn't you didn't uh, have the ability to search for before. So not only searching for patients within an individual site, but also what site is the best place to host this trial based on this information that we can unlock through Comprehend Medical. Uh, adverse event detection is a huge one in the pharma space because, uh, because of the very tight reporting de uh, deadlines. If a, if a pharma company gets a complaint or feedback about a medication through social media or through publications or through emails directly, uh, to them or, or, or a call to their call center. They have to report on that very, very quickly. And so uh, detecting automatically in any data that they ingest, uh, if an adverse event is mentioned or a possible adverse event is contained in this block of text, you can quickly screen out the, those patients that you need to follow up with and document and submit to the FDA uh, versus the, the social media posts that you can ignore. And then value adds to public data. So think about um, public repositories of data like clinicaltrials.gov, where you might want to monitor or keep track of what are the trends in publication data going on in these public sources of information. Um, by running those public data sets through Comprehend Medical and then building reports on top of the output, you can, you can build dashboards or get a sense of what are people publishing about uh, and what are the trends in that that I didn't quite know about before. And then Q squared solutions, it wasn't enough for them just to have Comprehend Medical because so much of the text that they were working with was in PDF files. And so before we got to Comprehend Medical, we had to call Textract uh, before. And, and, and what Textract does is character recognition, uh, key, key value uh, pair detection, which is saying within a chart, um, tell me. Uh, that, that this chart goes together and it's not just a one uh, single flow, uh, a, a line of text across a document. And I'll show you an example of that in a second. Uh, confidence thresholds too. So if you'd want to say only, uh, only show or give back to me the, conf the things that I'm very, very confident about seeing, then you can filter out the ones that you're not sure about. Uh, and then bounding boxes. So we, we, we hold for you the geographic structure of a block of text in a, in a document so that you can uh, make use of that as well. And, and just like Comprehend Medical, you don't need to be a machine learning practitioner to make use of these services. So these are, uh, this is a machine learning model that we have trained on our own data, but that you can send your documents to, and then we'll give you predictions back from our own model that we've trained on our own data. So you don't need to be a machine learning practitioner to make use of a machine learning model. So the, the problem with traditional OCR, and, and Javi mentioned this a second ago, is that it wouldn't do a very good job about 
keeping track of one column is, is all of the text in a, in a flow of thought, and then the next column contains all of that, uh, the, that, next, uh, that next sequence of, of thought. What it would do is it would, it, would, it would go across the whole page and treat that as one, uh, one sentence. And, and the problem, of course, is that this paragraph, or these, um, this page has in two columns. So Comprehend Medical fix, or uh, Textract fixes that, I should say, not Comprehend Medical. It will keep uh, the sense of that the whole first column is together and the whole second column is together. And then you can search on that text uh, downstream, for downstream use cases. And then, like I said, it will hold for you, too, that the chart in the upper left is, is just that. It's a chart. It's not, it's not a sentence that continues into the second column. It's one, uh, one chart with, with three columns in it. And then it also holds for you and makes a prediction for you about a sense of this is a name in this name field. This is an address in this address field. This is an ID in this ID field. And traditional OCR, would, you would just give a geographic coordinate to extract this, uh, this field at this geographic location. But if that form ever changed on you or the geographic structure of that form ever changed on you, uh, then your whole your whole uh, solution would would need to be redone, or at least that piece of it would be. And so, uh, Textract can adapt for you on the fly and say this is a social security number or this is a company name uh, in this spot. But if that company name spot changes, then then it can adjust just fine. And with that, uh, those descriptions of Textract and Comprehend Medical, I'll give it back to Javi to conclude the talk. Thank you. So. Uh, first of all, I want to say the stuff that um, Kyle mentioned something a little bit in passing, which is you don't have to be you know, an ML practitioner. I, I can really vouch for that. Um, sometimes when I'm procrastinating my job, I can be found perusing the AWS console and playing around with these tools. So I really encourage you guys to go in and do the same. Uh, within your console, you can go in and in the text tract uh, page, you can go and upload a document and see how it works. Try to throw stuff at it and, and see how it reacts. It, it really is really cool. And same thing with um, Comprehend Medical. Just you know, in the console, you don't have to write anything or write an API. Just go into the console and, and test it out. It's, it's really, really cool. But so we've built this solution we talked about, but so what, right? So we've the, one of the goals, or really my secret agenda with, with this project was not just to create a project or solution that would help us run clinical trials better, but it was to get people in the company and in the industry excited about the role that ML can play. Um, it sounds kind of cheesy, but it truly is a, a passion of ours to try to convey that excitement to others. And so after we finished building our solution, we, we obviously paraded it and showed it to everybody around the company. And everybody, as you can see on the screen, everybody in the company had amazing things to say. Everybody was absolutely blown away by, by the stuff that we could do. I mean, we're working with highly technical, highly scientific, very complicated documents. And the fact that we are able to derive insight from those documents in just a matter of minutes, whereas normally it would take a human hours, is an incredible achievement. And it really allows us to, to move forward and, and to, to do a better job in running and, 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 running and starting clinical trials. So we did a very good job of getting everybody excited. So of course, we can't just sit there and celebrate, right? We want more. So what more can we do? So I want to share with you guys now a few ideas for other topics that we're looking at at Q-Score Solutions to improve clinical trials. I have to admit that some of the items you're gonna see here are things that we're already definitely gonna work on, and some others are just things that I daydream about, and it's not entirely clear where one becomes the other, so just bear with me, right? The first is extract more. I was personally very surprised myself at just how quickly we were able to get a tremendous amount of accuracy out of the model. We started out with the intention of building a proof of concept, and then if it was successful, going out and investing more and actually fledging it out, we didn't need to do any of that. It just it did amazing, an amazing job from the get-go. So what we want to do is we want to do more. We want to extract more information from the protocols. Even though the stuff that we're extracting that I told you guys about, the labs, the lab tests, and all that stuff is the core of what the company does. We consume a lot more information from the documents. A lot more information from those documents is useful to us. So we want to extract a lot more information. We also want to build upon that. We want to come up with lab test recommendations. So Q-Score Solutions, right, we are one of the largest central labs in the clinical trial uh, industry. 
So we have a ton of information about the industry which, and which clinical trials are successful and what makes a clinical trial a successful trial. And now we also have a tool that allows, us, allows a customer to give us a protocol, which is to say the design of their clinical trial. We can now process that document, or we would like, we can't now, we would like to, right? Can take that document, process it, and just inferring from the design of the protocol and our expertise about what makes a clinical trial a successful one, come up with recommendations for how to better write protocols. The, the, uh, the better we can tell our customers to, or help our customers write protocols, the better clinical trials we're gonna have, which means they're gonna run faster, they're gonna run more efficiently, and we're gonna come up with much better drugs in the market at a faster pace. Also risk forecasting, right? This is a, a very typical use case of uh, machine learning, and we are also we are wanting to participate in this use case, right? Again, if we can get a protocol and parse the protocol very quickly when we receive it and gain insight from that protocol. With our existing knowledge and vast of knowledge about what makes a clinical trial successful and what kinds of design elements lead to issues in a clinical trial, we can process a protocol and then predict what items might be an issue and forecast which elements of the design of the protocol are a risk and then we can fisk those, des those design problems before they become a reality. Another use case, and the last one we'll talk about here, is a protocol chatbot. Now we talk about chatbots a lot, this, this is nothing new, uh, but we wanna take a, an approach to, to the chatbot that really makes information readily available to everybody within our company. Reading a clinical trial protocol requires scientific expertise and in-depth knowledge of clinical trials. So right now, even though the clinical trial protocol is the backbone on which everything at Q-Score Solutions runs, only a select few within the company have the competence and the expertise required to gain insight from that document. So with a protocol, with a solution like the one we've built that I showed you guys, and a protocol chatbot, we hope to really make access to information within a protocol, um, make it accessible to everyone, so that anybody within Q-Score Solutions, regardless of where they work, whether they're scientists or not a scientist, they can uh, interact with the chatbot and ask a chatbot questions about any given clinical trial. We believe that this will really enhance the access to information and enhance everybody's ability to act on that information and come up with the original ideas of their own. The more people have access to information, of course, the more people you have in your workforce who are able to come up with ideas and improve the clinical trial process. So I hope that we got you guys excited about what machine learning can do in your company and um, especially in the clinical trial and healthcare space. And remember, I really hope that our takeaway from the solution is, you know, we at Q-Score Solutions have a very niche uh, use case, right, of extracting lab tests from a clinical trial protocol. It is unlikely that many of you here have that same use case. But I hope that you take from our presentation that you can really string together a lot of services, and AWS has a tremendous catalog of services that if you string them together, no matter how weird or niche or complex your, um, or out there your use case might be, that if you come, up, come across it with an open mind, you can come up with a solution that works for you guys. I really encourage you guys in that vein to attend some of the other breakout sessions in Life Sciences. You can see some of these here. Hopefully you guys have signed up. I'll leave it up for a moment in case anybody wants to take a picture of those. Uh, the good thing is that they're all uh, basically here in the Venetian, uh, with the exception of the last one. Um, but I really encourage you guys to attend some of these because if you piece together a lot of these sessions together, again, hopefully you, you'll come up with ideas for how to leverage some of these services and ideas within your own organization. Um, yeah, I was just want to make sure everybody can take pictures. Um, we're also we're going to do a Q and A, uh, not here on stage. We're going to go to the Live Sciences Networking Lounge. So if you guys head out to the main hallway right here and then you turn to the left. There's a, a nice little like alcove there uh, with some high chairs and a few tables. So Steve, Kyle, and I will be hanging out there after the presentation. If you guys want to come up, we'd really love it. We had some people come up this morning. Uh, we had some very interesting conversations. So I really encourage you guys, if you want to come up and talk to us, ask us questions, or you know, tell us about your ideas, uh, please come up to the networking lounge after the talk. And thank you for, for attending our presentation today.